So we're basically going to segment this course up into a few different segments. So our first segment is going to be creating and manipulating volumes. Well, you're going to use some of your really easy to use tools here in SketchUp to create volumes. Um, if you already have ideas about programming and you want to do some experimenting with forming uh, volumes and, and things of that nature. But we'll also, there's a next, another segment we'll tap into will be working with Boolean operations, which is taking basic geometric shapes, putting them together, either sub subtracting or intersecting those faces to create a little bit more complex geometry from real basic forms. Then we'll also jump into folding and rotating surfaces. And then we'll also take a look at a really cool topic where we'll learn how to create smooth and organic surfaces. So we'll start off with a real basic concept, and this is going to be creating and manipulating your volumes. So this comes in handy if you already have an idea about uh, square footages, ceiling heights, things of that nature, because your square footage times your ceiling height essentially is the volume of the space that you're working with. So with those three things in mind, you can start to really uh, put together a nice concept for building, and you can use some of the tools you have available to you right up here along this top area here to kind of experiment with form and how we can make this a really unique building. So let's, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that the basically the square footage or the two-dimensional uh, dimensions we're going to be working with are 100 foot by 100 foot. That's going to be the basic footprint of the building. Now we, there's a couple of ways you can get this drawn. Um, I like doing things quick. Uh, you can actually do this use a rectangle tool or you can draw it out. Let's start off simple and we'll simply draw it out. So basically from this point, and I'm just going to simply use my mouse, you can see this line turns red. That lets me know that it's running, snapping along this red axis. And if I rotate it this way, you'll see that it's going with the green. If you move it again, it'll go with the blue. So we have our basically our X, Y, and Z axis. So I'm just going to start off going on my green here. And I'm going to assume we're working with 100 feet. So I'll type in 100 feet from this point. I'm going to make sure it snaps and turns red so I know I'm on the red axis. I'll say I want to go 100 feet in that direction. I'll bring it down here till this thing snaps into the green. And it may look a little bit off and it may not seem like it's following that green, but that's just because we're looking at it from a really weird perspective. So then I'm going to type in 100 once that light, light or that line turns green as well. And then we can just go ahead and snap this off and close it in place. And what this did was it created a surface that was 100 feet by 100 feet. Now, the great thing about this is you can highlight this information. You can right-click and go to Entity Information, and it's going to tell us our area. It's going to be really important information, right? I mean, after all, when you're designing and we're working with programs, we're working with volumes, ceiling heights, square footages, you know, and the functions of each space. So this really important information here. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. So if we know that we have an overall certain height for our building, we can then extrude this to meet that requirement. So I can simply go to this push pull button here, click on push, push pull. And once you highlight or just simply hover over the face, you'll see that face gets highlighted nicely with those dots. Simply click and move your mouse up. Uh, you'll notice your distance right here. Just move it in the direction you want to go in and type in the distance. So we'll say 100 feet. So now the volume that we're working with for this particular design, probably a dense downtown area, is 100 feet by 100 feet by 100 feet. So that should give us our volume, right? So let's highlight this whole thing. Let's right-click on it. Let's see if we get that kind of information. And we actually don't. That's because we now need to make this a group. And it's going to see what happens if you make this a group. So I can highlight this element. I'll right-click on it. I'm going to say make a group. And when I do that, You'll notice I can now click on it, and it doesn't click each individual face. But I accidentally included this little guy here, so let's double click in here, and let's get rid of our little inspector. It looks, actually looks like a building inspector here. Let's get rid of him. I don't want to include him in my geometry here. So now I'm just going to kind of scroll out a little bit here. Now I can right-click Entity Information and check this out. We now have the volume. So this is the volume of our entire building. So another important information. So things to think about as you're working. If you already know the square footage of your plates, your building plates you're working with, you already know your height, then you're probably going to have a good idea of the amount of, of volume that your building is going to take up. So let's say, for instance, um, let's this particular building here is going to be spliced up into different areas. It's going to, it's going to be a mixed-use building. So our ground floor is going to be some commercial and retail space. So it's going to be a, have a pretty high ceiling height, maybe 20 feet. 
The next floors going up will be about 12 feet. And then our very top, our penthouse, will go up to, you know, maybe another 20 feet on top for the more luxurious spaces on top. So we can actually chop up this giant piece of geometry here into separate little pieces. So I'm just going to double click on it. And what that does is it, it brings you in here. And then if there was any other geometry out here, because we made it a group, it would actually look grayed out. And when we click on this, it will only allow us to edit this particular group. So that's one of the benefits of having a group, especially if you're working in a real complex project. You can put things up in groups. You can double click on that group and you can make edits and it won't affect everything else around you. So now all we're going to do is use our tool here to just simply lay out our floors. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to do it on this line. And I'm going to do the same thing here because then we'll then use the rectangle tool and we need opposite corners to actually mark out our floor plates. So let's get those in place before we go. So again, I'm going to click on here and I'm going to assume I want to go 20 feet. Make sure you put in feet and you'll notice you got your dot here that shows you that that's there. So we'll go to the opposite corner. We'll type in 20 feet. And again, this will allow us to make our rectangle. So from that point we just made, we know that we have several floors in between that are going to be about 12 feet high. So I'm going to do 12, 12 feet. Again, make sure you put in feet, otherwise it's going to automatically assume you're talking about inches. And that's more of a floor thickness as opposed to a floor to floor height. So again, we're going to say for this last one, we're going to go back to 20 feet for the pit house, leaving us some room here for the roof and stuff. And again, this is going to be conceptual, so we're not going to have all of our building elements. We're concerned with how our volume and our space spaces are split up, and we're also concerned about glazing and, and things like that. So we're going to keep it really simple as far as materials and uh, things like that in our geometry. So now I'll just grab my rectangle tool, and we'll start off. Actually, we've got to finish off these here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back up. We'll go 12 feet before we jump into splicing this up. 12 feet here, another 12, 12 feet, and this last one here is going to be 20, 20 feet. So now we can go to our rectangle tool, and now we can split this up. And the key is making sure that you are double-clicked on here when you're making these changes. Otherwise, you're just adding lines on top of this group as opposed to actually coming inside and editing this group. So let's get our rectangles in place. So we're now ready to split up this floor. Oh, looks like didn't catch there. So I want to go from this end point here to there. And you can see when I come back here, it now created another face. So what we're doing essentially is just splitting this up. So let's finish it out with the rest of these rectangles. Or in our case, squares. So I'm just going to bring these over like so. So there we go. We now have the volume of our building chopped up. We know what the area of each floor plate is going to be. We have a pretty good idea of the function for each space. So we can now do some experimenting with the form of this building. So in the next lesson, I'm going to show you what we can do uh, once we have our volumes and, and things in place, how we can actually click, come back in here, turn these into individual little groups and components that we can then manipulate and rotate to come up with a really cool building form. Volume here split up uh, into different sub uh, pieces or subcategories here, but all based on, you know, some kind of a program we got from a, a client, we can now take each one of these areas and actually turn these into groups and components so we could do some further exploration with form and also different kinds of layouts for the spacing. So again, to go back in here and mess with this, if I just clicked on it once or try to click on any of those faces we created, you'll notice nothing really happens. You got to actually double click on it again uh, to actually access this group that we made here. So now, as I mentioned before, we have all these individual faces. So what we want to do is actually capture each one of these areas and each one of these slices, create a group and also a component so we can use one to add a label to, talk about the function of the space, um, but also group it together so we can manipulate it and rotate it around so we could play with the form of the building, but also use it a little bit later on to maybe come up with a different scheme for this same type of building. So maybe we don't want to stack our plates. Maybe we have a similar design that we can use this uh, for another design for something that where we have maybe more land space where we can actually take these volumes and place them out along the site. So you have some op options and it's all about flexibility and allowing your creative juices to kind of flow as you're working with your form and your volumes. So enough talking, let's put this stuff to action here. So again, as I mentioned, let's double click on this. So what we want to do is we want to capture each 
particular slice here. So to do that, make sure that you're looking at this thing pretty much straight on. You can do it from um, a different view. If you come up here to your bar, let's escape out of here real quick. Let's come up here to the top. Let's right click on this area and let's add some things up here. I want to add my views and you'll see it brings off this view here. But we're also going to right click and we're going to bring up one more option. And what's also going to help us is layers a little bit later on. But for now, we have views. So we can click on any one of these. And the key is just getting as straight on as we can, either, you know, looking at it from a front view. This will give us a, a nice front elevation view here. And now what I'll need, all I need to do is create a nice little window to grab and include only what I want to include on that particular level or that portion of the volume. So I'm just going to include that bottom portion. Again, again we'll double click on it. So let's highlight in there. So anything that's inside this window from here to infinity basically is going to be selected. So you can rotate around and you can see if had we actually gone up and included a little bit more, we would have gotten the entire thing. So there we go. You can see with that one little selection, we included everything on all four sides. So the key is making sure you're looking at this thing flat on. So what we did was we selected this first portion. So now right click on it. You'll see make group. Go ahead and go to make group. It's still highlighted. Right click on it one more time. Now go to make component. So what we just did, I'll show you exactly what we just did. Go to Windows, go to our drop down and come to components. And now what we're doing is we actually have a window open where we can access and reuse and kind of, you know, add some information to the first volume that we created. So if we go to here and we go in model, this is going to give us our components that are in the model. So we'll probably see our guy that was to scale. And we'll also see the first group we created, in this case, which is group run. And it looks like our guy here was actually not an inspector, but he's uh, Mr. Steve or Mr. Paul Stevenson here that we deleted earlier. So all of our components that are inside our model, there or deleted, are going to be visible here. So we have our first one in place. So I can click on that, and now I can either give it a new name. For now, I'm just, you know, we can call this one our first group. We can call this one um, ground floor and then maybe you want to add a detail in there of what exactly is going on in here so what kind of uh, activities will be housed inside this space or this volume we can say uh, dining and retail you know so dining and retail because this will be a mixed-use building so I can let's move this down just a little bit more so I can go back to my arrow here and if I click out of here and I come back in here and I double click and now when I come on here you'll see we have ground floor, dining, and retail. And we have our space divided up nicely. So let's do the same thing. Again, I'm going to go to any one of my views as long as I'm flat on. And right now, I know we're kind of at a perspective. And that was kind of what made it hard for us to be able to grab that at the first selection. So what we'll do here, and I think we can make an adjustment to this. Um, we can come to camera. And if you go to parallel projection, it will give us the true flat on elevation view. And that's what we want to work with. So now I'm just going to use my selection tool. We're going to go in here. Oh, remember to double click. And now we'll select our next floor. And again, I can rotate around and you can see it picked everything, which is exactly what we wanted. So I'll go back to that front view here. So we'll right click. We'll make this a group. And I'm going to right click it again. And now I'm going to make it a component. And it should be our next group, which is group number two again, because we changed our initial group to, we added an actual title to it. So now we can come in here and do the same thing. So I can click on this element. Make sure you click on group two. This time we'll say typical you know, apartment living. You know, and this can include, um, we'll say one, we'll say one, two, and three bedroom apartments so we know the volume we have the shapes we have the forms we have and we also know the function of each space so that works I can click on my arrow and I can click on this space and you can see nicely we've created another volume so what I'll do is I'll do the rest for these and I'll go ahead and finish this out and in the next lesson I'll show you how we can actually play with that geometry and how we can use what we just did to our benefit to actually explore with some of the different uh, building formations. So I challenge you for the end of this to finish out this lesson. Go ahead and group the rest of these floors. The rest of these will be your typical, uh, you know, your, your typical 
apartment living. You may need to do typical apartment living floors, whatever, whatever floors you want these to be. And then you'll need to do one for the penthouse. So when we start the next lesson, I'll have my ground floor, my typical apartment living, and I'll have my penthouse up here. You can click on this bottom area, and when you right click on it, you'll see a little window pop up. Go to Entity Information, and what this does here, it tells me exactly what I've created. So we've created the definition of this particular entity here is its ground floor. And the cool thing is it gives me the volume of this particular element. So that's that 100 feet by 100 feet by 20 feet height. And that's that volume of that particular section. So I can click on this information and you'll notice this window will stay open and I can move my way up and you can see the different floors. So how I did it was the ground floor. This next one was my one and two bedrooms. Uh, the next one is the two and three. This is the three and four. This is kind of a four bedroom, um, but there's additional, you know, common area on the space. So there's probably gyms, computer labs, a uh, little theater, just common area. And then up here will be our penthouse area. And in this area here, I'm going to go ahead and create another uh, volume for it. So I'm going to highlight that, right click, and we're going to go ahead and call this one just our roofing and mechanical. So now we can come back here to our components. I should be able to click on that element, and it should be the next one we created, which is this one, which is exactly what it is. And I'm just going to call this Roofing and Mechanical. And pretty much what it is, it's pretty self-explanatory, so I'm really not going to put anything uh, in that description. But we now have that taken care of here. So we can close out of this window, and now we have everything uh, sectioned off nicely. So before we move, I want to be consistent, and I want to maintain the volumes for each space. So you, as I showed you before, you right-click and go to Entity Information. It'll show my volume, but when I did it for the next space, it didn't. It just told me the definition. And that's because when we credit this, there's actually the bottom portion of this section or this geometry is actually missing, the floor, which is what closes this off and which is what allows us to actually calculate the volume. So really all we need to do is go to each one of these and I'll show you what we can do is we can rotate around really quick, grab your rectangle, go from opposite side to opposite side, click in there, actually well, control Z, you gotta actually double click on that particular group now draw your rectangle so we can now kind of click out of here I can come back in here double click on that element double click on that group right click entity info and we now have a volume and that happened because as I mentioned uh, as we were splicing this up the bottom surface gets cut off and it gets included on this one so that's all you really need to do if you notice that um, each one of these volumes are missing just go on ahead and add that floor close it off so that we can actually calculate that volume and again just to kinda of double check this volume is based on 100 feet by 100 feet by 12 feet ceiling height and you should get this value here so just keep that in mind uh, if, if volume is very important to you but the main thing here for us is being able to kinda of manipulate what we have in place already so the cool thing about this particular building form is we can keep this can be an option or we can actually rotate and kind of twist each floor and volume or function however we wanted to in this case. Because we grouped it, we can actually manipulate each one. So I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So we'll double click on this. And I'm going to grab, holding down uh, my control button, I'm going to select each one of these elements from basically from leaving, not selecting the ground floor. And all I want to do is I want to rotate this. So I'm going to go to a top view. I'm going to go to my rotate. And we need to place it somewhere where we could be consistent about how we're rotating it. And right now, it's really not snapping anywhere. So let's go ahead and draw a line. Again, this is just going to be kind of just as a guide. And now I'm going to go back to that rotate. And I'm going to snap into the midpoint. I'm going to go out here till I reach my green. And I'm just going to click. And then we're going to drag. And we're going to move it whatever direction we want. Let's say we want to have this uh, building or all the floor plates spiral up 15 degree increments. So we'll say 15. You'll notice that you can either move it to 15 or type in the value 15, and it moves everything. So we can tilt each volume or every function in each floor, creating a really funky-looking building. So let's kind of finish off the lesson by spiraling out the rest of this. So like we did before, we'll double-click on it. Now I can double-click the floors that I want to move. We'll go rotate, snap it to the center point, go until I see that thing snap into the green, 
Now I'm going to rotate it another 15 degrees. Pretty cool stuff. So now we're going to do the same thing. We'll select this floor and all the floors above it. Rotate, snap to midpoint, go to where I see my line is green, click, and rotate another 15 degrees. Do the same thing here. Hold down control, get all our buildings, rotate, snap to that center point, snap to green, rotate 15 degrees, and we're almost done. And we're going to keep these guys to, together in the same room with the roof and the penthouse to stay in the same spot. So we're going to grab the penthouse and the roof, rotate that, find the center point, click, rotate 15 degrees. Cool. So now we have a really, really cool looking funky looking little building mass I can erase this and you know this could be you know for our first concept that we can apply to maybe a massing model where we want to say hey this is you know this is the layout of our building so I have all my functions all my volumes all my you know ceiling heights that I want on each floor now you can start to play around with where we're gonna place maybe some terraces or some sky gardens and we can even probably play with some glazing so in the next lesson we're gonna finish off working with volumes I'll show you how we can apply some glazing to this so we can get a better idea of what we're massing and why we're massing it the way we are. And I'll also show you a technique that we can use um, because we've grouped everything that can actually speed up the process of uh, adding glazing. So I'll meet you in the next lack buildings in a dense environment is the glazing. So we want the form and we also want to have our penetrations and, and the glazing in place so we can start making some better ideas on how we want you know, this thing to get designed and how we want it to fit uh, within the site. So to do that, we just basically just double click on this element and now we can come back here and you know maybe add some different glazing options uh, to each one of these floors. So because we have basically these set up in each individual different uh, functions and, and names and different components, we'll have to come back in here and uh, adjust them and manipulate each individual area in each individual face. It's pretty easy to do, um, so let's, I'll show you how we can actually knock this out. So we could start off here on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus here on this particular face. So I'm going to double click on that group and I'm going to use my offset tool just to kind of get things going. So we'll go with this offset tool and when you use it all you need to do is select the face you want to work with, click on the edge and then move your mouse in for whatever distance. Now you can use your mouse in or you could type in the value. In my case I'm going to type in my value so I'm going to say one foot. Could have put in 12 inches as well. So I know I'm going to make the call that my uh, glazing here needs to be, oh, about 10 feet wide. So I'm just going to get my handy dandy ruler here and I'm going to draw a line that's 10 feet, making sure I put in feet in that direction. And then I want the spacing in between my glazing uh, areas or my openings to be another one foot. So I'll type in one foot or I could have put in 12 inches. Now I'm going to grab my pen here and we're going to draw in these openings on the surface. So essentially what we have here now is a surface here we can manipulate, push out, color, whatever we want. And then we have a thickness for our, you know, maybe this is a structural member or maybe that's just, you know, the spacing in between each opening. So now if I want to go ahead and quickly apply this and take this glazing and shoot it all the way across, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to hit control. I'm going to select my first line here, my second line while my face is, is highlighted. Now I'm going to type in control C control V and it's just a matter of uh, getting it placed properly so here's what we'll do we'll do it this way we'll grab this line grab this line we'll grab this face so I'm gonna say control C control V and we want to get this placed nicely so I want this to snap in place so we can place it and while it's highlighted let's go ahead and move it right on over into place here so now I'm going to say control V. So now uh, it's automatically grabbing it from the proper corner now. So now it's just a matter of snapping it. Control V. Control V. And just keeping this going. And if this math works out properly, I'll have some nice uh, 10 foot windows evenly spaced all the way across here. And it should work out nicely. So it looks, looks good. So we're not done yet, so we have an idea of how this is going to be formed. So now you can use your paintbrush here, your paint bucket. Come up here, and we're going to go, if you don't have translucent uh, picked yet, you can just come to this drop-down. 
you'll have a bunch of options to work with. We're not really working with too many materials. After all, we're just concerned with conceptual massing, so the mass of the building and any kind of openings. So I'm going to go to translucent, and I have a couple of options. I'm just going to go with this blue glass. And I'm just going to cl click on up. Looks like we've got to go back and double click on that particular segment again. Double click in there. Now I can go to my paint bucket, and we'll just want to simply paint these individual faces. So we'll go paint bucket, pick your blue, and paint. So you should be able to see inside your model now, and you should have a better understanding of uh, the size of glazing, the type of glazing we're using, uh, so on and so forth. So you see how that worked? That was really, really helpful. So now pretty much all you need to do is go back and you could do the exact same thing to each one of these floors here uh, using that same offset copy and paste method. Um, and we can go ahead and do this. Now the great thing about working, uh, the way we've been working, is we're able to kind of manipulate each one of these forms. So we can use this technique and kind of add glazing to this entire side of the building. Now it can get a little bit time consuming if we have to do this to each face and each one of these volumes, uh, depending on what our design is, can be, you know, two to four faces of glazing and that can eat up a lot of your time. So because we actually broke this up really nicely, we can actually come up here, go to our windows, and I can come in here and if we want to play with uh, some of our same volumes, we can do that. We could go to components that we created. And the components we have in place, since we know that pretty much the volumes are going to be the same for all the bedrooms and, you know, for this area, we can kind of recreate what we've made. But simply by using some copying and pasting, that can really help us out. So in this case, we could go to uh, ground floor. Actually, I'll show you a better way. We'll go to one of these floors here. We'll go just grab one of the ones that we're pretty consistent with. And I'm going to go ahead and place it there. So now, if I wanted to, let's close out this window. While this is highlighted, type in Control-C, Control-V. You should get another uh, volume here attached to our crosshair. And now, I'm just going to paste that on there. So do the same thing, Control-V. And let's stack this up pretty high. So you may need to place it and then grab it and snap it. A lot of times that might be the trick. So again, control V and snap it to that edge. Control V, snap it. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's say we can add another three more. So we'll say control V. And this may just be a different structure, but this is a technique you can take. Uh, it's similar to what we did for this building. And we're definitely organized, but this will actually speed up our process. So Let's say we wanted to go ahead and I can show you a quick way to add our glazing to this entire face. Basically what we did was we took this individual uh, volume here, right click it, go to entity information. You see it's the one and two bedroom, right? So if I click on this one, it's the one and two bedroom. Everything's the same, right? It's a copy of itself. The great thing about doing that is as we come in here and we manipulate any one of these, it's going to affect all of them. So it, this can potentially cut my drawing time uh, by you know, exponentially. So let's go ahead and do it. We'll go with the offset like we did before. I'm going to select, again, we've got to select this particular volume. Go with the offset, this face, and we're going to go in. Oh, looks like it automatically did it here. Let me control Z and go back. We'll bring it in. We'll say 12 inches. We'll grab our pencil and check it out. It hit all every floor. So just doing one move here, it's replicated one, two, three, four, five, six more times. So then again, we can measure. We know we want 10 feet going this way. So I'll type in 10 feet in the green direction. Do an additional foot for the thickness or the structure that will be hidden in between each panel. So we'll say 12 inches. I'm simply going to draw in the rest of this panel. And as we do this, it automatically updates throughout the rest of this drawing. So now we can actually come in here, select our face, and our lines like we did previously. Control C, Control V. I'm going to grab this element and I'm just going to place it right there. But we want to make an additional move here so we can have it aligned properly and snap in place. So now I can say Control V and we could simply add this. And as we do it, our entire face is filling up and that's because we copied that component so if you're in a situation where volumes are the same maybe you just need to make one volume and replicate it 
um, as opposed to what we did earlier where we kind of took the volume or the space that was the same and we added a different title uh, giving it making it a totally different volume which can totally increase the time it takes to do a simple facade so you see how quickly we're able to get this done so again double click on it let's go ahead and add our translucent color and like magic we've just completed a whole face of our building so we can get out of here go back to this hit escape or something and get out of there and there you go there you have it so we actually have two options here so we have a more traditional style type building and we have one with twisting and rotating floor plates uh, twisting at 15 degree increments so there's two ways you can actually uh, a couple of ways we can work with volumes uh, creating individual volumes uh, with different functions in space and then applying glazing as needed or we can take a real quick shortcut approach and if we know that we're gonna have a lot of commonality and a lot of typical stuff going on with floor plates we can copy some of those elements manipulate one of those elements that we copied and essentially take care of this whole group. So I'm excited to be able to show you this uh, to kind of save you some time, but also a way to kind of create some really cool, funky building forms and stay true to the actual program that we're working with. So we are consistent with our floor plates, our uh, square footages, and even volumes for our spaces. So here's a cool way we can actually work with volumes to do some conceptual massing. So in the next segment, we're actually going to start working with uh, applying some Boolean operations. So again, that's working with real basic primitive geometric forms but using your software to bring things together or you know separate things or blend surfaces to create more complex geometry from basic forms so i'll meet you in the next lesson where we'll start working on the next segment.